The people who watch this channel, like myself, are rich nosy, aren't we? We love to know where the rich and famous have lived, where they've dined, all that sort of stuff. And I know, like many of you who watch the programme on a regular basis, we love all the things about blue plaques. You know, I found it fascinating going to Eaton Place and seeing where the brilliant film star Vivian Lee lived. And you could sort of imagine, couldn't you, all the greats of the day, like Laurence Olivier, Noel Coward, the Queen Mother, all going through that portal of that famous black door. And we only know this, of course, all thanks to a blue plaque. And that's what's nice about it. I think it's a celebratory thing, showing exactly what that particular person did in their lifetime, their heritage, and more importantly, where they live. Because we all imagine, don't we, that everybody lives in these mega mansions and it's glitzy, glamorous. It doesn't always work out like that, though. And this particular star, who literally was a major icon and loved London, well, actually, it's a strange tale as ever. Let me explain. Hi, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for your time today morning. How are you all? Good evening if you're going to bed. I know I keep forgetting that. Don't forget to tell me off. Yes, I hope you've had a lovely day, whatever you're doing. It is fascinating, you know. I do love looking at plaques, and I know many people do. I'm a big statues fan. You look at them and think, wow, did they look like that? Because remember, they've got no digital platform or phone. This is their sort of legacy, isn't it, you know? And the blue plaques here in London are amazing. You know, I remember finding the home of John Gielgud, which is literally just behind Parliament, and you think, Wow, that's not bad. Then you study and you think, yeah, he wouldn't have had to walk far to go to the theatre. So you can understand why it was a nice abode for him. One star that came over here in April 1951 and was a sensation at the London Palladium was none other than the Wizard of Oz herself, yes, the lady, Judy Garland. Now, Judy Garland came over here simply because MGM had let her go. She was trying to reinvent herself back as a vaudeville star and she became once again a glittering success with a concert career that truly, truly took off around the world. Everybody knows about Judy's problems, no two ways about that. But she enjoyed success after success over here in the United Kingdom, playing in places like the Hippodrome Birmingham and, of course, up in Glasgow and Blackpool too. So, you know, she was literally loved across the entire United Kingdom and, I know, around the world. As many people know, I was lucky enough to interview and work with many of her co-stars and things like that, Jack Lemmon, Mickey Rooney, and they all told me that she was so deeply insecure about her own talent. The only thing she ever felt secure about was when she got up on the stage. Upon her very last TV appearance, I interviewed a gentleman, a comedian who was a very funny man, in fact, Freddie Davis. And he was on that very final show in January 1969 when she appeared on Sunday night at the London Palladium for the very last time in place of Dame Shirley Bassey. Shirley had been booked, Judy finally made it. She stood aside and said, this is a legend. What a lady Dame Judy is, what a lady Dame Shirley is. And she should have been Dame Judy, by the way. But what's interesting is a lot of people are asking me, Neil, was there a blue plaque for Judy Garland's final London home? Now, I remember going there to have a look at that when we were doing some filming a few years back now. And what was fascinating was it wasn't as glamorous as you might think. It was down a bit of a muse alleyway, Falkenduggan Place, just a little bit off Chelsea in the King's Road. But as many people have said, she was on low points at this point, you know, not particularly at her best. And in the movie, Patricia, by Renny Zellweger. Uh, Judy, of course, was told to be very difficult at the London Palladium gig, stuff like that. That truly actually wasn't the case. She had one or two bad nights, but not everything was as bad as it was painted out in the movie. So I did a bit of investigating. So I did a bit of investigating as to what happened and was there ever going to be a blue plaque. And what was interesting was is that the original house that Judy sadly passed away in at Forker Duggan Place, well sadly that was pulled down a couple of years back and this was in its place. It's a brand new Muse effect. Apparently it had to be pulled down because of the structure and all the problems that were now inside the building. And sadly, and this can happen not just to this particular house, but to a lot of famous people's houses, the current owners don't want a blue plaque. They don't want people outside their door. They don't want people taking pictures. Apparently, it still already happens because fans find it and want to make a pilgrimage. And that truly is the reason why Judy is not celebrated in a blue plaque form over here. Now, I, you know, it's up to them. I can understand that. Perhaps they don't want that. You've got to respect their wishes. They paid a lot of money for the house, millions, no doubt. But it's a shame, isn't it, that her final resting place, her final London abode, is not recognised in London by so many fans that truly, truly adored her.
I was lucky enough to meet Liza and of course her other daughter, Lonely Loft. But sadly, you know, they have no idea and they have no control over what could happen. But we do know that Judy Garland was well loved here in London. And yes, if you want to check the house out, it's not that far away, as I say, from the King's Road. Looks nothing like it did in Judy's day, but for fans, that's simply still enough. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.